Hello and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to go ahead and see if the Tesla Cybertruck can power my house using nothing but the outlets in the bed. Now I know there's a Tesla power share that you can use and buy and uh, if you buy the foundation series they actually include it with the truck. It's $2,500 for the power share unit uh, and the charger that enables power share. That's where they get you. They say it's $2,500 for that, but it's another $8,000 for me to get it installed. I had an electrician come out here and quote it, and it was $8,000. So the power around here, very reliable. I'm not going to go ahead and spend $8,000 to do that if I have very reliable power, but it would be good to have something in case of an emergency. So I went ahead and bought the necessary parts off of Amazon. Uh, I consulted an electrician to make sure that all of this was okay and what processes I need to do. So I'll walk you through some of that and we're gonna see if the Tesla Cybertruck can power a house off of the outlets in the bed. Let's go check it out. You have your two 120 volt 20 amp outlets and your 240 volt 40 amp outlet. It's a 50 amp plug, but it only supplies 40 amps. Now, on the house side, we have a 50 amp plug, which I normally use to charge things with. 50 amp plug right there. Now, it's okay to back feed your panel as long as you're cognizant of how much power you're drawing and you shut off the main breaker. It's very important to shut the main breaker off because if you don't, you can back feed the entire grid and you can cause really big problems, not only on your side, but also risk for linemen or other people working on the power lines uh, on that side. So I have my main panel right here and there is a 200 amp main breaker. Now I have already gone and shut off the high use things in the house. I've gone and shut those down um, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit but we'll go ahead and let's just kill the main breaker. Okay so now the house has no power. All right, so here we are at the circuit breaker panel of the house. I've already gone ahead and turned off all the high current devices. That's your air conditioning, your range, your hot water heater, anything that's just gonna cycle on and off automatically. Now I do have a home monitoring device that monitors the current use in the house. And I know that with all of those devices off, my average consumption is only about 400 watts or so. So very low, as long as none of those things are running. Um, so I've shut off all that just so I know that my initial transient draw will be very, very low, only like 400 watts. And that's what we want. I don't want to shock the truck. I don't know how it's going to react. So we're going to go ahead and figure out what happens. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and turn the truck power on and we're going to make sure that it uh, doesn't short out, that there's everything's good. The cable I made is fine before we go ahead and tie it into the house. So let's go ahead and do that right now. In order to make this work, there is a plug that you have to make. Uh, there's a reason why its nickname is the Widowmaker. It's because you have a male outlet on this side and a male on that side. Now you have to be extremely careful that when you're using a plug like this, you have the power off at the panel and you have the power off at the truck at all times or you can risk electrocuting yourself or damaging your house or your truck power. I've got the Tesla app open. We're gonna go ahead and turn on those outlets right now. Okay, so now the outlets are on. So it will only run for 12 hours or until the battery gets to 5%. My battery's at 71% right now. So it's more than enough to do this little experiment. So the outlet is on but it is actually not tied to the house yet so the next step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to come over here and we're going to tie it into the house so again the main breaker is off that's the breaker that would back feed to the transformer on the street um, and i've also gone ahead and turned off the breaker there so we're going to go ahead and turn that on and start the back feed process So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the air conditioner upstairs. Now it's only a 20 amp breaker, so it's not too much power. Uh, it's not on yet. I have to go in the app and turn it on. 
Now remember, I'm gonna leave the heat off. Now this is not a winter thing. <laughs> I, I would not run electric heat on this, maybe your heat pump, but I would not run your electric heat on this. It just doesn't have enough power that it can output to run electric heat. Um, if you have a fireplace or something, I would default to that. I would not run your heat on this, but it has enough power to run your air conditioner, at least one of them. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. All right, so here we are, we're back in the Cybertruck. Now we're drawing about 0.9 kilowatts on the power outlets in the back right now. That's a little more than the 400 kilowatts I said earlier because there are a lot more lights on. A lot of the smart home lights turned on when the power was restored. Wasn't expecting that, but that's okay. 0.9 is fine. There's 9.6 kilowatts available from that outlet. Now to prevent us from overdrawing that outlet and to allow there to be a little bit of room in case there's a spike like an air conditioning turning on or other high loads that have a big spike when they turn on, we're only gonna let it draw up to 80%. Now, okay, that's not very much power that you get out of this, but hey, it's better than nothing if your power's out and you don't wanna spend $8,000 to get the um, Tesla Powerwall installed. All right, so right now we are still drawing 0.9. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the upstairs air conditioner to cool. And I am turning the temperature down so it should turn on any moment here. And we'll go ahead and we'll see a spike on the kilowatts. There it goes. So right now the upstairs air conditioner is running so you see it's drawing about two kilowatts more. There was a big spike. The truck seemed to handle it really well though which is super awesome to see that the truck can handle a big power spike like that and then flatten out to 2.2 kilowatts. All right, so now that we know that the upstairs air conditioner works and we can at least get a little bit of a cool space up there, we're gonna go ahead and try to turn on the downstairs air conditioner. So in order to give it a little bit more room for a spike, I went and turned off a lot of the lights. It didn't help very much. We dropped about 200 watts when we did that. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the downstairs air conditioner now and see what happens. And maybe we fault out the truck. Okay, so the downstairs air conditioner is just turned on. So you saw there was a big spike and the truck was able to handle it. I mean, the truck did four, it went up to nine kilowatts on those outlets and then it leveled out at 4.3. So now that's the big air conditioner downstairs running. I don't know how I feel about that big spike. If I wanted to run this all the time, say the power is out, I would probably run it in long stints and then shut it down for a long duration. I, I don't know if I want it cycling like that, but clearly the truck can handle it. That did a lot better. I, I thought for sure it was gonna fault out, but it clearly didn't. So that's pretty good. All right, so here we are back inside the house. Uh, the main air conditioner is running, so it's still drawing a lot of power from that. I just wanna go ahead and demonstrate something that's really interesting. Um, even though it's drawing all this power, if you were running on a generator, the generator may sag and lag a little bit when you turn things on, but because all this is solid state, you can go ahead and turn on things like the lights, uh, fans, you can turn all that on and it turns on just like it would if you were running on the power grid, which is very interesting that the truck is able to respond to those loads instantly and able to make it really natural like you're living on the regular power grid. I haven't seen any sags when large loads are coming on. Everything sounds normal, everything starts normal, uh, which is very cool. Uh, so I think they did a very good job there at being able to provide lots of current very fast Let's go ahead and disconnect everything. So one of the very first things we wanna do, just for safety, is we're gonna go back into this panel and we're gonna shut off that outlet right here that the Cybertruck is plugged into. So we know now it is disconnected, the main is still off. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug the Cybertruck first because the Cybertruck can be the source side. So we wanna unplug that and make sure that that is safe. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug that. Now, I would still treat these prongs like they're alive. Uh, I would not go ahead and touch those. I would keep them pointed away from you. Now, go ahead and treat those like they're alive until I unplug this side. All right, now it's dead. So now I have both ends of the cable. We're just gonna set those on the ground right here. Both ends of those cable are unplugged. Everything's unplugged. We're gonna go ahead and uh, Put up the the Cybertruck side. Um, 
shut this out. Shut that. We're gonna go ahead and shut the cider truck up here. All right, so there you have it. So you can back feed from the outlets in the back of the Tesla Cybertruck into the house. You can run your main things. You can maintain comfort. Uh, one thing I did actually in the house just a moment ago is with the air conditioner running, I ran the microwave. Uh, I turned my computers on. All that worked just fine. So yeah, you can live pretty comfortably just off of that instead of spending all that money on the uh, Tesla PowerShare. It's really like, for somewhere that doesn't have very stable power, I would recommend getting the power share. You get more power out of it. It can handle things better. It's just all around a better solution. Now, if you live somewhere like I do and the power is very stable, we've been here for over three years. The power has only ever flickered in that time. We've had tornadoes and all sorts of bad storms and the power has only ever flickered. So with it being that stable, am I going to spend $8,000 to get a power share installed? No, I'm not. But this is a good solution for those off cases that maybe the power does go out for a day. Maybe there is an ice storm. Okay, I can't run my heat, but I can run my fireplace. I can run my gas stove. I can turn on the fans on the air conditioner to circulate the heat. So I, I think this is actually a really good solution for an emergency situation. I usually keep the truck charged up to at least 70% when it's sitting out here and that would get me over a day of power. So I think that's pretty reliable. Um, I have my other cars, I don't need the truck in order to drive around so it could just sit here and power the house. Uh, you'd have to be pretty conservative on what power you use and when you didn't use it. But I think overall it is a really good solution. Um, I would go ahead and consult an electrician. I'm not an electrician. I consulted an electrician before I did this, but I would make sure that you consult your electrician and you go out and make sure that it works for your application. I would not just go out and buy this cable and just plug it in willy nilly and just start drawing power off your cyber truck. Uh, make sure that you contact the right people and you know what you're doing. Um, so with that said, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if I come up with more interesting solutions and things to do with the Cybertruck, I'll post about them. But uh, make sure to like and subscribe down below to see if any other content comes out. So thanks.